Cheryl, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for all of your great works in the community. And I'm a little jealous about this music because nothing plays when I'm coming up to the stage. So what is that a sign of? Eh? You can at least play Who Let the Dogs Out or something, you know. I mean, my goodness. Can I get a little song, a little jazz music or something? Just kidding, just kidding. The person responsible for that, partly, is going to introduce the next award recipient. And I must say, he has a very tall job of trying to summarize the great works of David Lawrence in two minutes. You told me two minutes when we met last week about you can't do it in two minutes, you can't do it in 20 minutes, you can't do it in two days. <laughs> David Lawrence is really one of the giants in our community, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing um, the introduction as well. But Shabir is one of the founding members of uh, Cosmos as well, has a daughter, medical doctor. Um, he's a husband, born in Miami, educated here in Miami. Is that fair to say? Or your kids who are educated here in Miami as well, husband and wife, that's right. But they're not here, they're in New York. Don't they? Too bad they couldn't make it, sorry. He's a member of the Miami-Dade Asian American Advisory Board, member of the Medical Reserve Corps and pro bono administrator as well as director and founding member for UHI Community Care Clinic. He has done a lot. He was actually born in India, so he comes to us by way of India. Shabir Motawala, come on up. Yes. And I must say, he can email too. This man emailed me probably 40 times. But I like, he is, you've been, you've been a part of this, right? Yeah. He's persistent. He personifies persistence, and I love it. Thank you. This is a great event, and thank you for allowing me to be your MC. Shabir. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, good evening. Now you know Calvin. And you said it right. I am asked to introduce Mr. David Lawrence, and two minutes is not enough. Uh, I think it will take about 45 minutes. We can have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner here <laughs> to go through what Mr. Lawrence has done. Um, I don't know who doesn't know Mr. Lawrence. Uh, everybody in this room, around the town, around the country, they know. The only people who do not know Mr. Lawrence are the people who are watching Jerry Springer show, show or Divorce Court. And Mr. Lawrence, that's only 7% of the population. So keep in mind, Mr. Lawrence is a former publisher of Miami Herald. He is a founder of Children's Trust, worked very passionately for the children's welfare. Uh, like you have heard the ad, an educated consumer is our best customer. Based on that, the audience here are the educated people. They can read about him in this book. And I'll save the time because Calvin will be walking here very soon. The reason Cosmos is honoring Mr. Lawrence is there's a story behind it. About 10 years ago, when I was reading Miami Herald, the three holidays, Hanukkah, Christmas, and Eid, fell in the same month within a few days of difference. I saw Miami Herald on their masthead, Happy Hanukkah. A few days later, they had Happy New, uh, Merry Christmas. And three days later, there was Eid, and there was no mention in Miami Herald, as if Muslims did not exist. And I thought for a second that Abrahamic faith is a three-legged story. It has Muslims, Christians, and Jews. And if you don't have one leg, that is a very unstable stool. Based on that, I asked Miami Herald. At that time, there were Mr. Lady Olmsted and Mr. Duck Clifton, why you are not recognizing Muslim holiday. I didn't hear from them. I sent the email, no answer. I sent them a letter, no answer. I called them, no answer. After the days became weeks, weeks became months. And then one day, I decided to send the email to Mr. Lawrence that let me try, he's a final. As Mr. Lawrence says, can we talk? He's known for that, can we talk? He had a program. So I said, okay, I'm gonna to talk to him. And I sent the email, and two days later, my computer says, you got mail. <laughs> I opened the mail, and it was from Mr. Lawrence. Not to me, it was to his uh, editors, but copied to me, and it says, 
please contact member of the Muslim community. We did not have a cosmos. Meet with them. And here I said, oh, another American bureaucratic thing. Pass the buck and wash the hands. From the boss to the subordinates. I didn't know that Mr. Lawrence doesn't work like that. A day later, I got a call from editor. He asked that we need to meet with the Muslim community as soon as possible, and he gave me 15 days. He gave me Tuesday, and I remember, he says, Tuesday afternoon, we can meet with you. And then he says, what kind of diet Muslims have? And I said, why are you asking for the diet? And he says, well, we'll be serving the lunch. And I said, OK. First time, Miami Herald not only wants to meet with us, but they want to feed us. <laughs> that goes with Mr. Lawrence's thing, that he works with the Children's Trust where he wants to feed the people, and really fits perfectly with you. That foundation, what Mr. Lawrence did, that he initiated that Muslim holidays should be recognized. While he was the publisher, he made sure. He retired from the thing, but he led the foundation. And that foundation of the bridge building between the Muslim community and Miami Herald led to a fantastic dialogue we have. We have a John Yearwood, we have Rick Hirsch. In the past, Miami Herald, and they're still honoring Muslim holidays. And because of that encouragement Mr. Lawrence gave us, we reach out to the electronic media. Last year, we had a couple of electronic stations did recognize Muslim holidays. There is a PSA. And for his effort to reach out to the Muslims, to reach out to the community, to build the bridges, and keep on asking the question, can we talk? And then he wants to listen. Coalition of Software Muslim Organization is very honored and humbled to present this award to you, Mr. Lawrence. Thank you all. <laughs> Next time I want the theme from Rocky. Uh. <laughs> so I've never been introduced before in which the words Jerry Springer and divorce court <laughs> were used before. I'm going to figure out the deep meaning of this later. And just so you know how time flies, and I truly appreciate the graciousness and warmth of this, I've been gone from the Herald 15 years in January, so what he's talking about, well, not 20 years, <laughs> but 15 plus is what it was. So let me say a couple of things. One. Um, I think I'm in the same business you are, the business of justice and what is fair and what this country is all about. And that's what Cheryl Little's all about and that's what Howard Simon is all about and that's what I want to be about. It seemed to me that the Imam had some important things to say to us. He talked about the common wonders of our respective faiths. And he talked about all the children of Adam. And one of my fundamental beliefs is that every child in this country, and for that matter, any country, is entitled to the basics. And we talk about ourselves as a child-centered country, but to be honest about it, you don't have to travel very far in the world to understand we're not a very child-centered country. And I can tell you countries that are far more child-centered than we are. Not because we're not a good people, we are. Not because we're not instinctively generous, and we are. But we are folks who tend not to be anywhere near as inclusive in how we do things and what we do than we ought to be. And here is a country, I'm not a politician, I'm a fully registered independent, and if you come out of this, that was not supposed to elicit a laugh. <laughs> if you come out of what I say thinking that, boy, these are kind of radical thoughts, 
or I'm some kind of social engineer, you wouldn't understand me very well. I think it's all about fairness and justice. I worry deeply about the hatefulness in this country the last several years. It is very, very worrisome to me. When people call the President of the United States lawless, among other things, I think that's a terrible mark on a whole bunch of people who are very destructive to this country. This country works best somewhere toward the center. Don't tell me we can't afford things. The question is how we allocate the resources we have. If we want to spend less than $3,000 for pre-K in this state, which is what we do, and $51,000 to incarcerate a juvenile, then we do not have our priorities straight, I promise you. We live in a... We live in a country that can afford to spend, and you're going to interpret this as political, and I'm going to regret that you do. Truly. We live in a country that can afford a trillion and a half dollars to bring democracy to Iraq and Afghanistan. And one out of every five children in America lives in the full federal definition of poverty. We need to be a significantly better people than this. And I saw just in the past two weeks, and I know I'm over the top perhaps with some of you, but I hope not with others because I think it's all about justice. And I'm not a wealth redistributionist. But I was struck by the story. In the past two weeks, that 85 people in this world, if you aggregated their wealth, it's exactly equal to the wealth of three and a half billion people on the planet. And you ought to be worried about this. And for those of us who are people of faith, whatever the faith might be, I certainly think that if Jesus or Moses or Abraham or Muhammad were to appear in person in the days or time to come, and were to read the story about 85 people and three and a half billion people would say there is something wrong here. We can be a better people than that. You are a better people than that. I think that this community is blessed to have you. Salam.